Taking inspiration from heavy metal, this Netflix anthology series sought to bring together multiple animation studios to tell stories aimed at adult audiences. Over the course of the first volume, we see several different characters' stories being told. But who are the heroes and who are the villains? I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and this is Love Death Plus Robots Volume 1 Characters Good to Evil. Two quick disclaimers before we start. First off, this video will focus on Volume 1, as it has 18 episodes and is the longest of the three volumes. Volumes 2 and 3 will be saved for a separate video. Also, since most of these episodes are under 20 minutes long, we'll be focusing on characters who have a more obvious morality ranking, so we won't be including Gale and Rob from Ice Age or Adolf Hitler from Alternative Histories. With that said, as usual, we'll be starting with the most noble character and working our way down to the most evil. The characters in this first category are the good. The gold medal of good has to go to the farmers in suits, Hank, Jake, and Mel. When the countryside's invaded by insectoids called DBs, these three suit up in mechs in order to clear out the infestation. Hank takes on the initial swarm when a breach appears in their shield, but is quickly aided by his neighbors when the threat proves to be bigger than expected. The three are able to take out as many of the DBs as they can, while the other families in the Colony make it to safety. Shit, just the three of us? Jake ends up making a heroic sacrifice and detonates his mech after its failure to help clear out the invading insectoids, so Mel and Hank can reload their ammo and finish taking them out. In the end, they manage to clear out the breach as well as take out a larger version of the DBs as well. The silver medal of good goes to the wives of the aforementioned farmers, Beth and Helen. Beth plays the primary support role in the episode by coordinating everyone from the colony to make it to the safety bunker as well as providing additional gunfire support to help protect their home from the DBs. Surprise. She's also the one to take the final killing blow against the giant DB. Helen also plays support, but in a smaller role. She helps to corral the colonists into the bunker as they arrive and provides gunfire support when the DBs make it to the farm. The bronze medal of good goes to Liang from Good Hunting. Liang starts out as an apprentice to his father in hunting shape-shifting spirits that are causing trouble. He ends up meeting a Huli Jing or fox spirit named Yan and ends up preventing her death. As time goes on, Liang befriends the shapeshifter and provides her with food, as her hunts become more and more difficult due to British colonization. He even rescues her from a group of men who are harassing her. To leave her alone. As Liang begins to work with robotic engineering during the changing times, Yan seeks his assistance once more. Yan's body had been made robotic against her will, and she desired to hunt those who oppressed her and other women like her. Liang works to build Yan a new body, so that she's finally able to shapeshift back into her Huli Jing form, and hunt down predatory men. Following him is Lieutenant Colby Cutter from Lucky 13. Despite being assigned an unlucky ship in her fleet, Cutter proves that she can get the job done. During her first mission out, she chastises another pilot for choosing to take off without his ground crew, to which he ends up getting blown up. She takes it upon herself to rescue everyone from that ship as well as holding out for one straggler to make sure everyone is retrieved. With every subsequent mission, there were no casualties as Cutter made sure all the soldiers were brought home. In the final mission, Cutter ends up detonating her ship in order to kill as many enemy troops as she could until the evacuation ships could arrive. Next are Lieutenant Decker and Sergeant Sabaisky from Shapeshifters. Despite being discriminated against for being werewolves by their fellow soldiers, these two still make it their duty to help protect their country. When their convoy is ambushed, Decker is able to use his heightened senses to locate the threat to have it neutralized. But it's still my country. During an ambush of a local watchtower, Decker's able to convince his superior to let him go ahead of the rest of the troops, as he would get there and deal with the threat faster. He discovers everyone to be murdered, including Sabaisky, with the work being done by another werewolf. The young marine is able to suss out the werewolves on the Taliban side, and during a day mission, and takes them on against orders during the night, and killing them. Decker then decides to end his service and takes Sabaisky's body with him as he departs from the horrible treatment he endured. Moving on to Dr. Wee Hunt from Sucker of Souls. We don't see very much from the archaeologist, but we do see that he genuinely cares for the well-being of everyone on the dig, from the mercenaries he hired to the young assistant that unfortunately gets eaten. Dracula. Wee Hunt's knowledge is able to get the crew out of a couple sticky situations with the vampires and keep them alive just a little bit longer. Another crew member, we have Susie from Beyond the Aquila Rift. Susie's another character who doesn't get a whole lot of screen time 
time, but her time on screen is impactful. During her first ruse from her surge tank, she immediately questions how the crew ended up in the Shedder sector, claiming that having a routing error would be impossible, and sensing something to be awry. No way. On her second wake, she's able to recognize that Greta, who met them at the station, is not real and attempts to attack her, assumingly aware of what's really at play. Our first non-human character is next, Otto from The Dump. This garbage creature came to be from an abandoned puppy that ended up fusing with the metal it consumed in the dump. Otto, come here, boy! Otto ends up eating ugly Dave's friend, Pearly, but only because he was hungry and in poor condition. He gets taken on as ugly Dave's pet once the elderly man realizes the truth about the creature, and following him is his owner, ugly Dave Dorvacek. Ugly Dave is just a solitary man who lives in the dump and has done so for the majority of his life. Everything he could ever want and need ends up in the dump eventually, so he sees no reason to leave it. To blow your head off. When he's asked to sign papers to move out of the dump so that the city can build, he intentionally stalls with a story and promises to sign them afterwards. Despite initially attacking Otto for eating his friend Pearly, he stops once he realizes that Otto is just a refuse covered puppy at his core and adopts the creature as his pet. Though he does get a few points docked for allowing Otto to eat the city inspector, but he recognizes that Otto needs the dump in order to live, hence he has no plan to move out. Afterwards, we have Sunny slash Carnivore from Sunny's Edge. In a dystopian world where beasts are genetically engineered for deathmatch entertainment, Sunny's an undefeated fighter alongside her ace monster, Conivore. When the ringmaster tries to bribe her to throw the match, Sunny refuses. Her friends claim she is fighting as revenge for her past assault and mutilation. When Conivore ends up winning the match, Sunny's met by Dicko's mistress, Jennifer, only to be attacked. It's revealed that Sunny is just a placeholder body, with her consciousness inside Conivore. She then proceeds to murder both Dicko and Jennifer, explaining that every fight is a fight for her life, giving her her edge. Moving on to the mercenaries from Sucker of Souls, Mr. Flynn, Mickey, and Gary. These three are hired by Dr. Weehunt to protect the archaeologist during his excavation of a series of underground tunnels housing vampires. We see the most action from Mr. Flynn as he fights back against Dracula when they're attacked and makes sure to keep the doctor alive. When his employees decide to make jokes, he drives home the point that the threats are serious and need to be handled properly. The mercenaries fight back against Dracula when he attempts to storm their base and end up blowing him up in order to make sure they survive. Rounding out our good section are Sergeant Sergei Pavlovich and the Red Army. From the Secret War, Pavlovich and his men are sent into the Siberian forests in an attempt to take out demons that have resided there. Both the sergeant and Lieutenant Nikolai Zakharov had previously voiced concerns to their major about the platoons being too spread out in order to support each other, but were told that each platoon was capable. Shall we prepare to fall back? When they see another platoon in distress, they're forced to stand by and watch as they've been ordered to not interfere. They discover information left behind by a secret police member that the demons were initially summoned to help aid the army. Pavlovich wants to use the information to dispose of the demons, but is warned by his lieutenant that they need not bring up the government's past mistake. Eventually, they discover a burrow and attempt to cave it in, but the explosion ends up opening it instead. The sergeant thus commands a last stand against the demons and orders his son to report to the major in order to have the area bombed, destroying the demons for good. Now, with the good characters wrapped up, we now move into more neutral territory. These characters fall in the moral gray area. Starting out the section is the yogurt from when the yogurt took over. After being engineered in a lab, the Yoger develops sentience and asks for an audience with the US leaders. It has developed solutions to all the country's problems and requests payment in the form of control of Ohio. The leaders laugh at the idea, but then agree when the Yoger threatens to seek an audience with China instead. We will just go to China. As progress occurred in Ohio, the Yoger gave the president a plan to follow in order to eliminate the national debt. The president chose to defy this order and subsequently doomed the country into to turmoil, signing over executive power to the yogurt to fix the issue. This proves to be successful and humans are able to live in prosperous conditions for a decade before the yogurt leaves the planet. Next we have Yan from Good Hunting. This Huli Jing became a kindred spirit to Liang after he decided to spare her following her mother's death. She became dependent on him for meals as the progression of technology made it harder for her to shapeshift and hunt. Hunt the men who think they can own us. After she's operated on against her will, 
for the governor. She desires nothing more than to hunt down the British colonizers in order to free other women that are in similar situations to her. She's able to achieve this through Liang's help and hunts down those who chose to harass and assault working women. Our next spot goes to KVRC, XBOT 4000, and 1145G from Three Robots. These three travel to Earth, deciding to take a vacation to learn about humanity and why it collapsed. They attempt to understand how humans were able to survive with such limited capabilities, while also taking jabs at one another in attempts to understand their culture. Rhythmic kind of noise. Due to their lack of information, they often fall victim to assumptions and hearsay about what human culture was like. Moving on to the cat from Three Robots. Though not having a major role in the episode, the cat becomes a minor foil in the robot's vacation. It uses the robot's limited knowledge to trick them into believing that if they stop petting it, the cat will explode. That was pretty much that for the human race. The cat also confirms KVRC's comment about human genetically altering cats, stating that it added to humanity's downfall. The cat then demands more petting under the threat of explosion, calling upon other cats to corner the robots. Moving on to the city inspector from the dump. This inspector is sent out to the dump to have Ugly Dave sign paperwork, granting the city permission to build where the dump is, and requiring the man to move. He's annoyed at the request of Dave telling him a story first, before he signs the paperwork, but he allows it if it gets the job done. Another group of people, we have the cyborg crew, Hawk, Sully, Kaylee, Rookie, and Bob from Blindspot. This group is sent on a mission in order to rob a heavily guarded microchip before the truck it's on reaches a nearby tunnel. Despite having alerted the guards, the team tries their best to support one another in the efforts to get to the front of the truck. Uh, shut your grease trap. Rookie eventually is able to recover it, but is upset at the loss of his team, only to discover that their data has been backed up by Bob for rebuilding. Since we can't determine what everyone's roles are in regards to the importance of the microchip and who has it, we can't really rank them any higher or lower. Moving on to Thom from Beyond the Aquila Rift. Attempting to return home from a successful mission, Thom and his team end up in the Shedder Sector due to a routing error and come face to face with Thom's old flame, Greta. He takes the time to catch up with her while the ship is being repaired and becomes intimate with her once again. Greta? He eventually discovers from her that they're farther in space than initially told and goes to tell his team, only for it to go sour. He's eventually able to catch on that he's in a simulation and demands to see the truth. It's then revealed that Thom is elderly and emaciated and losing his mind as he's trapped in space. And rounding out the section are the Debees from Suits. When we first see these creatures, they appear to be an invading force, attacking the colonists in search of a meal. However, we see at the end of the episode that the colonists are the actual invading force in the planet populated entirely by DBs. So they only fight to survive and to find food to eat. And with our gray area concluded, we now enter the dark side. These characters are the bad and the evil. At the top of this section, we have Greta from Beyond the Aquila Rift. Greta shows up to inform Thom and his crew that due to a routing error, they are light years off their course. She takes advantage of the ship being down for repairs to catch up and rekindle her fling with Thom. Afterwards, she openly admits that she lied about where they are and reveals their true location, stating that the rest of the crew should know. However, Susie calls out that Greta isn't real and attempts to attack her before being pacified. After Thom demands the truth, she admits that she created the simulation to shield him from the horrifying reality. When she reveals the true state, Thom is shown to be in extremely poor condition amongst the spider web of other trapped ships. She herself is a terrifying spider-like monster and sets Thom back into the dreamlike simulation when he sees her for who she is. Just outside our bottom three is Dracula and the other vampires from Sucker of Souls. Dracula is discovered in a series of underground tunnels wanting nothing more than to feed on human flesh. After attacking Simon, he hunts down Dr. Wee Hunt and the mercenaries in order to consume more. He eventually falls victim to a giant explosion planted by Gary, but the group ends up in a nest of other vampires awaiting their next meal. The bronze medal of evil goes to the Taliban werewolves. These two are able to infiltrate the watchtower by taking Sabaisky so they couldn't be detected and then proceed to slaughter everyone else. 
They manage to temporarily avoid capture as Decker intentionally avoids ousting them during a reconnaissance mission, only to have a battle with him that same night. They are both powerful and ruthless, but still end up falling victim to Decker. The Silver Medal of Evil goes to Dicko and his mistress, Jennifer. Upon Sonny's arrival to the Beastie fight, Dicko offers the champion $500,000 to throw the match, to which she refuses. Have a peek. Dicko then sends Jennifer to seduce Sonny, only for her to attack the young woman. Dicko only cares about his business and will get anyone out of the way who threatens him. The gold medal of evil goes to the governor from Good Hunting. Jan mentions that the governor becomes a regular client of hers when she had to resort to being an escort in order to get by. Because he had a thing for machines, he drugged Jan and forced her to be cybernetically enhanced so that she would be more attractive. He also became enraged when she didn't consent any further and attempted to attack her, instead getting attacked himself by Jan. And with our morality spectrum complete, let's wrap things up by awarding some Sinner medals. The Darwin Medal goes to the three robots. It's clear that they had some knowledge of humankind, but there were definitely holes in the information. The Pride Medal goes to Dicko. In fact, he also receives the Greed Medal. He only cared about the success of his business and refused to let anyone else surpass him. The Sloth Medal goes to Ugly Dave. He refuses to leave the dump as everything will end up there anyways. The Gluttony Medal goes to Dracula and the Vampires. They want nothing more than to feed on human flesh. The Wrath Medal goes to the Taliban werewolves. War is already a place full of hatred, and adding angry lycanthropes doesn't help. The Envy Medal goes to the cat. It takes advantage of the robots having hands to fulfill its desires to get pet. Finally, the Lust Medal goes to the governor. His desires are so specific to the point of forcing bodily mutilation to others for his own pleasure. But let us know in the comment section if you agree with our ranking, and let us know if we should cover Love Death Plus Robots Volumes 2 and 3 next. Make sure to hit that notification bell and binge our other videos. But most importantly, stay wicked.